In this episode, we'll spend the whole day in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We'll taste some local beer, visit its famous public market, and we happen to be here during the Third Ward Art Festival in the historic Third Ward neighborhood. We'll go for a stroll along the river and Lakeshore State Park and the local pub next to the RV park. Then we'll drive up to the Door Peninsula, sample some cheese near Sturgeon Bay and the brewery in Green Bay. And eventually, we'll end up on the shore of Lake Superior in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. As I try and sample something in each state, filling out the map on my way back east and eventually home. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV wherever I want to be. Cause I'm free in my RV yeah. Well, good morning once again Let's go see Milwaukee, Wisconsin And uh, since we did a Hanser Bush in St. Louis It is only fair that we do Miller in Milwaukee, right? don't always get to do it, but sometimes I like driving through these residential streets and compare the different architectural styles you encounter in different parts of the country. Milwaukee so far looks pretty cool. Here we are, Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And there's hardly anybody here. Here to greet us is the Miller Cruiser, which is apparently a bus that toured the country in 1953 to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the brewery. And uh, it is eerily deserted. I mean, it is around noon on a Sunday, Labor Day weekend. Hmm, something is off. You would think this place would be busier. I'm not necessarily a Miller fan, but when in Rome, right? timing impeccable as ever. I came on a Sunday, which is the one day where they don't offer the tours. Yeah, it was a somewhat disappointing experience from a customer service standpoint too. I understand not having tours on Sunday, but the skeleton crew they had, you could tell they did not want to be there working on Labor Day weekend. In 1000 feet, your destination will be on the right. Here we are, downtown Milwaukee. They do have a different uh, mobile app to, to pay for parking here, but I figured it out. Hunkmobile.com or hunkmobileusa.com. And it's like eight bucks for four hours. It's fine. It's not bad for a downtown, actually. This whole neighborhood is called the Third Ward. What used to be warehouses and factories are now condos, shops, restaurants. And here's the public market. And here, on Broadway, in this area formerly known as Commission Row, this weekend they are celebrating the Third Ward Art Festival. And everybody is out and about. And why not? It was cloudy in the morning, but it is turning out to be a beautiful afternoon. The winters here, by the way, are incredibly crude. This is actually the country's second coldest major city, so naturally, this time of the year, everybody wants to be outdoors. Let's just uh, wander around the festival a little bit, and then I'm gonna get something to eat. That's a cool map with all the license plates of the different states. Vintage license plates too. Thank you. 
This whole area, a perfect example of gentrification at its best. Bloody Mary weekend brunch. Hmm, I like that. All right, let's go into the market. It's a bar out of the back of an old Ford. The Milwaukee public market here is fairly new. It opened its doors in 2005, inspired by Pike Place Market in Seattle and envisioned as a space that would support the local businesses. I'll admit it, but it's a little too crowded for my taste. I'm more of a social distance kind of guy, but sometimes it is good to experience places like this, if anything, for the sheer sensory overload and getting out of your comfort zone. And they have all kinds of food, from local sausages and cheeses. You know we're in cheese country here, right? All kinds of foods and smells, even fresh produce. A little bit of everything. Here we have some cakes and a wine bar we might be coming back to. Such variety. Here they have a shop that sells spices and every couple of feet it feels like you're teleporting to a different place, all different decor. Hmm, I could go for Middle Eastern food, but it is too crowded and nowhere to sit. Hmm, chocolates. Yes, there's room at the wine bar. That's where I'm going to eat, or at least nibble on something. So we got some Spanish manchego, and the rest are from Wisconsin, some cheddar, Havarti, and Asiago. I came to the second floor after my cheese plate to, to get a better view, and let me tell you, this place is amazing. This is also where the bathroom is. It appears Milwaukee is happening today, and uh, this wine place is pretty cool because you can buy food anywhere in the, the whole market, and you can bring it here and then you know have your glass of wine with whatever food you buy around the place. Very cool, very cool place. The, the Milwaukee market here. And, uh, before we continue, I want to show you my new Ridge wallet. And if you recall, we spoke about the Ridge wallet back in, ooh, we were in Texas, episode five or six. It comes very nicely packaged, as you can see. It even comes with a screwdriver and some extra screws, just in case. And this is it. This is how slick it looks. It's just two metal plates, a money clip, and, and a, an elastic band, and that's it. And inside, you put your cards and then you clip your money. You, you don't have the temptation, you know, like when you have a bifold or a trifold leather a wallet to put, you know, all kinds of stuff in there. And before you know it, it's like a big thing like this. This is it. Let me put all, the, all my stuff in it and show you and show you how it looks. By the way, this is beautiful color. It's a, this blue aluminum, that's their team favorite. And, that, and that's why I got this one. And this is it. This is all I really need in between these two metal plates, which are, by the way, RFID blocking. You can put up to 15 cards in here. And uh, that's it. That's it. It would make a great a Father's Day gift. By the way, Father's Day is coming up. Don't forget, if you go to ridge.com slash myrv and you put promo code myrv at checkout, you get 10% off. And um, of course, I thank them for sponsoring this episode. I think I'm just gonna walk around a little bit. Let's check out the bridge. I decided to come down here to the river walk, and it is such a lively river, the Milwaukee. Yes, all kinds of vessels here, and uh, we are very near the confluence of the Menominee and the Milwaukee at this point. Hmm, they have a light rail system. And there it is, a little bit downstream, the confluence. Let's walk on the other side of the river. Well, let's, let's go back into the, the historic Third Ward again. Hmm, El House. I wish I could, but there's only so much you can drink, right? 
I wish they would invent synthahol already. You know, that stuff they use in Star Trek that you can drink but not get drunk. Yeah. This area here was originally inhabited by Native Americans way back when. Interesting historic fact, since the confluence effectively divides the city in three, when the European settlers arrived, they built three separate settlements and they didn't get along too well, so the streets didn't match, you know, they weren't aligned, which accounts for the many diagonal bridges still in existence here in the city. Oh cool, this is one of those like pedaling bars, but it's a riverboat. That's a cute little vintage trailer there. Music. Live music. Nothing like it. Have I mentioned? Yes, of course I have. had to come back for this one and uh, I really like the guitar and violin combination. It sounds really good. I don't know why I get the feeling that Milwaukee might be a party town. I just get that impression. I know, odd. Tell you what, I want to see Lake Michigan, so let's go to Lakeshore Park. Summerfest here holds the Guinness World Record as the world's largest music festival. And um, what are these things? There is Discovery World, a museum, an aquarium. But today I just want to walk along the lakefront. The smokestack belongs to Jones Island Water Reclamation Facility. And this here is the inlet. And obviously today we're just going to be exploring a very small fraction of this city. But so far, I've really liked the little I've seen. Hmm, wedding photo shoot? There's the historic Milwaukee Breakwater Light, built in 1926, marking the entrance to the harbor. Wouldn't it be nice to go sailing on Lake Michigan? I'll take a pontoon as well. Oh yeah, Lakeshore State Park here, very nice. Right on the shore of Lake Michigan. Great views of the downtown skyline and very nice, very nice. It has this, this loop trail here. It goes all the way to that lighthouse over there, I think. So I'm just going to walk the whole thing. Very, very pleasant. Beautiful day here. It's turning out to be sun came out. It's early in the 70s. Beautiful day here at the end of summer. In, in Wisconsin, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Who would have thunk it, huh? Check them out. Geese. No pelicans here. Lots of seagull and geese. And no pelicans. Should I say, fly, goose, fly? <laughs> Here's an even older lighthouse, the Milwaukee Pierhead Light, established in 1872. And um, I'm gonna start heading back. Well, hello there. Well, I didn't show you, but I rode back on one of them scooters. 
It turns out it is a two-handed operation and I forgot to bring my chest mount. Let me tell you, those things are kind of scary and fun at the same time. There's the Milwaukee Art Museum and the Quadrashi Pavilion by Spanish architect Santiago Calatrava. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of street art here in this area, Wisconsin Avenue. Here to the left, it is called the Hot Dog Vendor. And what have we got here? It looks like a classic sculpture with some watermelons. It is actually called Hira and then half in parentheses. The grand looking building is Northwestern Mutual Headquarters. Of course, it had to be an insurance company. The classic Art Deco Tower is the Gaslight Building. And here we have another piece of street art called Large Boxing Hair on Anvil by the same sculptor who did the one we saw in Minneapolis. Very nice architecture in this area in general. The Feister, which includes this 1893 Romanesque structure and the 1962 13-story tower behind. Crossing the Milwaukee River once again. Oh wow, look at that! Are we in Paris? Well, not too far off. This is the 1876 Mitchell Building, considered an outstanding example of what is called Second Empire architecture, which was inspired by the redevelopment of Paris under Napoleon III's Second Empire very popular style during the second half of the 19th century. We've come full circle, back where we started a couple of hours ago by the public market. Hmm, Drafton Vessel it's called. Time's up! I think we've seen enough here for one day, and I think I got a good overview of what the city is all about, and I like it. Seems to be my kind of town, at least this time of the year. I wanted to hit a brewery, but I don't want to drink and drive, and I was gonna stop by the Harley Davidson Museum, but here's the thing, it is kind of late for that, and not only that, this weekend, they are celebrating the Harley Davidson rally here, so it is kind of crowded. I'm going back. There's a small pub within walking distance to the RV park, and that's where we're gonna go. Here we are. It is a gorgeous afternoon in Milwaukee. Here at the fairgrounds RV park. And I'm gonna go check out, uh, I don't know if you can see it. Liquid Johnny's. Well, it is walking distance. Oh yeah, this is exactly what I needed. Well, I forgot to take a picture, but I ordered the, the, the beef tenderloin sandwich with mushrooms and cheddar cheese and fried onions. And it was delicious. So, um, Liquid John is here. Thumbs up, fully recommended. Of course, I got the, the rowdy drunk guy next to me at the bar, so. Otherwise, I would have probably had a second beer. But, by the way, I had one Lakefront IPA. Really good, too. Oh, the sun at this time of the day. And I'm just gonna go back to the RV and edit some video, relax. Tomorrow, we go up to Green Bay, 
and uh, maybe we'll make it to the UP. We'll see. Good morning. Well, we're going up to Michigan. But before we do that, let's pay a quick visit to the dump station. Some of you new to the series might ask, why leaving so soon? I really wish I could linger, but you see, I have to be in Pennsylvania in exactly one week, and I still want to see a little bit of Michigan and Ohio along the way. I-94, not the most scenic of drives, but sometimes you just have to put in the miles. Here we're going to take State Route 310 towards Two Rivers. It is called Two Rivers because there are actually two rivers here, the East and West Twin Rivers. We continue north towards Door County. I want to taste some cheese. It's Lake Michigan. Let's take a break. Well, taking a quick break here on the side of the road and on the shores of Lake Michigan. It's called the Crescent Beach Boardwalk. I'm just gonna walk around a little bit, stretch my legs, and it is a pretty nice beach here. I have never swum on a fresh water beach before, but one of these days I will. And they have a lighthouse. The Algoma Pierhead Lighthouse. It seems like a pretty cool town here called uh, Al Al Algoma, I think it is called, and this uh, nice little beach here. On the That was Algoma. Seems like a nice town, actually. I wanted to see Sturgeon Bay originally, but I don't think we're gonna make it all the way up there. We're just gonna go to this cheese factory and then back down to Green Bay and up to the UP. That's all we really have time for today. But I'm not complaining. You think it might rain? Found parking back there. Let's uh, let's check it out. It's Renard's cheese here. If I was a mouse, this would be cheese heaven. Hmm, beef sticks. Yes, free samples. Let's try some cheese curds. They have a small cafeteria and this is their signature grilled cheese sandwich. A little crowder in there is a popular place, obviously. I had the, the signature grilled cheese sandwich, which has bacon and pesto sauce and, uh, and uh, spinach. It was really good. Now we continue towards Green Bay. Why not? It's 
we inch our way towards Michigan. Here we are, Green Bay, and we're only gonna do one thing here. Titletown Brewing Company, and the brew pub is actually located in a historic train depot. Here we are. Uh-oh, road closed. You know what? When there's a will, there's usually a way, even towing a trailer. I've been getting real lucky with parking lately. I guess you don't really have to be in the mood for a good IPA and, and it's a cool looking brewery, you know, with this smokestack up there. No, it was too good to be true, they're closed. Yeah, they're closed on Monday. And I was even getting in the mood for that IPA. <laughs> oh well. I like it. I like this uh, type of brewer here with the smokestack. Let's see what this is. Seems to be a restaurant. Well, this is actually the brew pub of the brewery. Green 1998. Hmm. Salud. I'm gonna have to take a break after this. Let's go check out the football player sculpture. We've got a football player. And uh, where's the train? There's no train. Oh, I, see, I get it. This used to be a train station. And there's a train back there. That's pretty cool. And there's the train. Now, let me tell you something. That was one good IPA. You know, sometimes they're too fruity, sometimes they are too hoppy. But this one had like the right balance of bitterness, and I still have a fly in here. I have flies. I have two flies in here. I have to, I have to, I have to get rid of them at some point. But uh, there, as I was saying, good IPA. And at some point, I want to spend more time here in Green Bay. And as you can see, we are just passing through. But this this whole section of the trip is just a big passing through. I'm gonna make me some coffee. And as I said, we're still three hours away from from Lake Superior Coast, and, um, and there's a casino. You know that they have five uh, sites with hookups apparently, and the rest is dry camping. I don't mind dry camping for one night if it's you know it's not hot, which is good. But if I can find a nice campground by the by the ocean, I was gonna see. Well, Lake Superior is like an ocean. I do believe it is the largest uh, freshwater lake in the world, isn't it? If memory serves from from grammar school, I think that's what I learned. And then tomorrow we're gonna see the pictured rocks, uh, Lake Shore. And we're going to, uh, well, not quite to Mackinac Island, but right, you know, right to the place where you take the ferry. St. Ignace, I think it's called. And this fly is really getting on my nerves, guys. They're so quick, too. This fly is really getting on my nerves. And if you want to learn how to make Cuban pro coffee properly, I have a video about that. I'll put a link somewhere in here. So you basically if you don't know yet, you get the, the, it has to be white sugar. 
We take the white sugar with a bit of like that first coffee that comes out, the really dark concentrated one, but it's almost like a, like a, you know, it has the consistency of almost like a cream. And then you do this until it looks, you know, like a like a homogeneous paste kind of um, texture. And then when you pour the rest of the coffee in here, it's gonna race to the top and create that crema. But if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know, you're familiar with this stuff already. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Welcome. Well, admit it, I'm sure you listen to some crappy music in your youth as well. So, <laughs> in any case, here we go. This was an unexpectedly nice break, to be honest. And now, it's about three hours, almost non-stop. Oh, I see what the deal is. I think we're going into Eastern time. Yep, we're losing one hour. But on a positive note, I'm gonna be in the same time zone as home. That is some Fata Morgana there. Would fall be coming? Oh no, I certainly see a few precocious trees here and there. My RV. Well, on the next episode, we reach the shore of Lake Superior and we begin exploring pure Michigan, starting with the Upper Peninsula, Mackinac Island, and then we're gonna start working our way through the mitten. Until then, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. Riding, riding in my